Space exploration and competition go hand in hand. Or maybe it's just more obvious than the collaboration that's always been there. Case in point, the space race. In 1957, Sputnik was launched by the Soviet Union to become the first artificial Earth satellite. It is seen as the start of the space race, with the Soviet Union and the United States one-upping each other until they could do so no more. A month later, the Soviets followed up Sputnik with Like the Dog, the first animal to orbit the Earth. The US then entered the race by putting their own satellite, Explorer 1, into orbit in 1958. Then the Soviets hit back with another milestone, Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space, in 1961. Whilst all these space firsts were being competed for by the US and Soviets, the United Nations were striving for peace in space by implementing space law. Yes, space law is a real thing. Starting with the Outer Space Treaty, first signed in 1967 by the US, Soviet Union and the UK. It instilled that the exploration and use of outer space shall be carried out for the benefit and in the interests of all countries and shall be the province of all mankind. Two years later, the United States seemed to secure their victory in the space race by landing a man on the moon. Neil Armstrong said it himself, landing on the moon was one giant leap for mankind. To emphasise this, a brick-sized piece of the moon was brought back on Apollo 17, known as the Goodwill Rock. It was broken up and distributed to all US states and the nations of the world to unify human endeavour. But I don't think America landing on the moon was the true end of the space race. That came in 1975. The Apollo Soyuz test project was the first international space mission. The US Apollo spacecraft docking with the Soviet Soyuz spacecraft, uniting a crew of five and uniting two space superpowers. The same year the European Space Agency was officially established, but Europe had already been working together since the early 1960s. After the Apollo Soyuz project, the collaboration between the two continued with the Shuttle Mir program, the US Space Shuttle docking with the Soviet Union Space Station Mir, leading to the biggest demonstration of international collaboration, the International Space Station. It took 10 years and more than 30 missions to assemble, with collaboration among five space agencies, the US, Russia, Canada, Japan and the European Space Agency, representing 15 countries. Over 20 years, 241 individuals from 19 countries have visited the ISS, doing research in microgravity to help us all down here on Earth. Having remained in low Earth orbit for quite some time, space agencies are setting their sights on going back to the Moon, along with companies like SpaceX, so is there a new space race developing? It may seem that way again. There's nothing wrong with a little healthy competition. It can further the whole field. And we wouldn't be where we are today without it. But it's important to remember we are all striving for the same goal, to further humankind's space exploration. And we will go further by working together. Things are already looking different to the last moon landing. Australia, Canada, Italy, Japan, Luxembourg, United Arab Emirates, United Kingdom, and the United States of America have all signed the Artemis Accords, probably the most prominent mission to the moon headed by NASA. Maybe less well-known collaboration is the joint effort of space agencies to utilise satellites to look after our planet as a whole. The Committee on Earth Observation Satellites was first established in 1984 to coordinate and harmonise Earth observations to make it easier for the user community to access and use data. Then came the International Charter for Space and Major Disasters, it uses satellite data to help those affected by natural or man-made disasters. It's been in place since the year 2000 and now includes 17 space agencies and space system operators. The charter has been used 680 times to support disasters in 126 countries over the past 20 years. With all this collaboration, hopefully one day we'll reach Mars. But what will the first flag planted on Mars be? Maybe a planet Earth one. We are all representatives of planet Earth and there has been a flag developed to show this. Oscar Pernafelt created this flag to be used while representing planet Earth and to remind the people of Earth that we share this planet, no matter of national boundaries, that we should take care of each other and the planet we live on. I think it would look pretty good on the surface of Mars, and Martians wouldn't know us by our nationalities, they'd just see us as Earthlings.